Hi there and welcome back. It's Lisa from Critters and Ink Designs in Ontario, Canada. Today I'm going to be making this adorable little candy cane holder. And I actually am casing this from a video that Don Griffith had on a few years ago when I first became a demonstrator and I made a whole pile of them um, when I the first year that I was a demonstrator. But I was rooting through some stuff in a box and I came across one that I had made uh, a couple of years ago and I actually had made it larger so it's quite a bit bigger for the larger candy canes and I will put the dimensions of the larger one on my blog uh, in case you want to go with the bigger candy canes but isn't that cute this was an old stamp set and I don't remember what it was called but it made little folded tags and so you had the front of the deer and the back of the deer and then this greeting was from Christmas stamp set that we had a few years ago. But as I said, I made this one, um, oh, I don't know, three or four years ago. And then this one, I'm using the Kindest Gnomes, which is in the current holiday catalog. And for my little sentiment at the back, I'm using Sending Love and Peace this season from the Peaceful Deer stamp set. Yeah, it's really cute. All right, so let's get started. So to do these little candy cane holders, you need a piece of, I'm using garden green. So my main piece is two by eight and a half. And then you need another piece of garden green that is two by four. Now on the two by eight and a half on the long side, I scored it at two and two and a half. Where's my camera? So two and two and a half. And on the smaller one, the two by four on the long side, I scored it at half an inch, one inch, and then three and three and a half. So basically you've got a half an inch and an inch on either side. Okay. And then you also need two pieces of, I'm using Poppy Parade. And these two pieces are one and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then I have another one that is one and three quarters square. So one and three quarters by one and three quarters. And then I have a piece of designer series paper. And this is from the Painted Christmas, which is in the holiday catalog this year as well, the July to December. And it's cut at one and a half by five and a half. And then I have another one that's one and a half by one and a half. Then you're also going to need a piece of basic white for the back, and this is one and a half by five and a half. And then I also have a piece of basic white scrap that I'm going to stamp my uh, little gnome on. Okay, so we're going to fold and burnish our score lines. And then on our little piece, We'll fold and burnish our score lines as well. And both sides. Oh, you know what? I'm getting a shadow, so let me move my teacup here. Put that over there. Okay. So to assemble this, I'm going to use my stamp and seal. So what I want to do basically is I want to have this behind like this, and it's gonna create a little box. There, like this, okay? All right, so let me put some stamp and seal here. Now, as you know, I usually use liquid glue, and I forgot to bring it over, so I'll just use this, I had it handy. Oh, thanks, Dream just handed me a piece. Oops. So I'm going to lay that right against like this, lining up the tops right in the middle. So I still have my two folded edges on the back. All right. So then on each of these little wings, I'm going to put just one right against the score line. And then when I fold this up, I'm going to tuck those in so that this sits flat at the bottom and and the wings tuck in and it's going to create the side of the box on each side okay. 
There we go. Okay, so there's actually our little container. That's how easy that is. So we can go ahead and decorate the front of the holder. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put some Stampin' Seal. onto my designer series paper. I'm just going to center that right onto the po uh, Poppy Parade. And if it's directional, make sure that you have your directions correct, because I almost put this on upside down. And then on the little one and three quarters uh, Poppy Parade, you're going to do the same with the designer series paper. pop that right on here and this is going to go in the front center of our little box okay and then I'm going to flip this over put a little bit of adhesive on the back and I should be doing this on my silicone mat, but again, I didn't bring it over, so whatever. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna center that in there. There, beautiful. Let's burnish it down a little bit. Oh shoot, you know what I forgot to do? Let's just lift this up real quick. I forgot to put my ribbon behind. So I'm just gonna peel this. Luckily, I just put it down so it's still fresh and I can peel that back. I can't believe I forgot that. I totally forgot about my ribbon. Unbelievable. All right, so I have about, oh, I don't know, 10 inches of ribbon. Probably don't need that much, but. And I'm just going to slide it behind, centered. There, that's better. Okay. All right. Now we're going to set that aside and I'm going to stamp my little gnome. I'll choose a different one this time. So I need my um, basic white scrap. So let's grab the memento ink. And I'm using memento because I'm going to be coloring her with Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol-based markers. So you really want to use a water-based ink. And done. okay, so now let's grab some blends. Let's see what will we have him wearing today? So let's see. I have Granny Apple Green, Parakeet Party, and Light and Dark. So let's use those. So here's my dark Granny Apple Green. And I'm just going to highlight to his hat here. So our alcohol markers have two sides. They have the thick side, which is more like a paintbrush almost. And then we have the small line, which creates this, it indicates that we have like a little bullet tip, which is for more fine detail. So just so that you know what these two lines are. So the wide one is the brush or more of a brush and the finer one is the bullet point. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in there and blend the granny apple green. So cute. And because it's alcohol, the more you swirl it around, the better it'll blend. Now I did go over into his beard a little bit with the granny apple green. So I'm just going to take the color lifter and I can actually erase that. There. 
So that will take that right out of there. And for his beard, let me see, what do I have here? I think I'm just going to highlight him with gray granite. And he can have a gray beard. So I'm just going to highlight a little bit with the gray granite. So cute. I think for his outfit, I'm going to use light evening evergreen. And dark granny apple green at the bottom. And I think Poppy prayed for his mittens. And light soft suede for his boots. Oh, look how cute he is. And then for his nose, I will do light flirty flamingo my husband always laughs at the names of these blenders a little pink mouth here they're so cute all right so now i'm going to die cut out our little gnome so let me grab my dies i'm going to die cut out my little gnome here Let's see which one we need. Is it this one? Oh, good pick. I got it on the first pick. Okay, so let me grab my mini die cutter and we'll go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so to cut on the mini cutter, you need your base plate, which is number one and two number two cutting plates. So first we'll put this one down on my cutting plate. And we'll place our little gnome in the middle here. Okay, so cute. We have another set of gnomes that are retired from last year and I just can't give them up. I love them. They're so cute. Okay, so here's our little gnome. All right, and let's just close this up a little bit out of the way. Okay, so let's bring this back in. And I think I'm gonna put some wink of star on our little guy here, just to give his hat a little bit of shimmer. I don't know if you can see that shimmer, but it's pretty shimmery. Very cute. And for the top of his hat, I picked up some mini uh, little pom-poms and I'm going to pop one on his hat with some liquid glue. I'll just sit for a second and let that dry. Okay and then on the back of him I'm going to put just a couple of dimensionals. So this isn't quite dry yet, so I'm going to actually put the dimensionals here because I don't want to knock his pom-pom off. Okay, so I'm just going to place him right on top of the dimensionals. Oh, that is just adorable. And then on the back, we are going to put the little greeting from the peaceful deer so I'm using sending love and peace this season and another one that would fit is wishing you a wonderful year and friendships dear but I like the sending part here it's um, it fits nicely and it's 
kind of a general nice greeting. This one here, okay. And I'm going to stamp this out in Poppy Parade. I'm just going to pop this right at the bottom. Beautiful. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to just glue this onto the back of the Poppy Parade. So I'm centering it on the Poppy Parade so that I have the same border all the way around. Well, that's a little crooked, but you know what? That's okay. And then this is going to go onto the back. project so let me just pop that on here and again I'm just centering it so that I have the same green border all the way around they're so cute the wipes a little crooked but it's okay I'll live with it and then now oops lost our pom-pom oh dear pop that guy right back on there so I'm going to just tie a square knot. Maybe. Beautiful. Okay, and I can just give this a little trim. Beautiful. Now this can just slide right in here and it'll hold it in place. And that's all there is to this. So you can use these at Christmas time for place settings or just put them on the top of a gift, with a, which I think is a great idea. And um, But they're so quick and easy. You can make these in no time flat. So once again, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy this little treat holder and try some on your own. And again, I will post the dimensions for the larger one if you're interested in making the larger ones. Bye for now, and we'll see you soon.